In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called recognizing consistency between statements about standard Gibbs free energy. This problem looks like it's going to be really, really tricky, but it's not as hard as it looks. So we're given a few different statements about the natural log of the equilibrium constant or the equilibrium constant or delta G or terms that we use to calculate delta G, the enthalpy and the entropy. And we're being asked to figure out which one of these four statements has to be false because it's uh, contradictory to the other three, or maybe all of the statements are consistent, in which case you would choose that there are no false statements. So when I'm solving this problem, I like to start with the um, delta G first, because that's one that I feel really confident that I know that I, what it means. When a delta G value is a negative number, which is what it's showing right here, so when delta G is a negative number less than zero, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. So I'm just going to put a little S on there to indicate that it's spontaneous. Um, and that's just in general, a delta G that is negative, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. And if delta G was positive, that would mean the reaction is non-spontaneous. The next term that I wanna look at, the next easiest one for me to analyze is the equilibrium constant, K. The, remember that if our equilibrium constant is small, so a small K, that means that the reaction is not favorable or not spontaneous. Uh, and if the equilibrium constant is big, that means that the reaction is favorable or spontaneous. So maybe I'll put this down here. If we have a large value of K, then the reaction is going to be spontaneous. So this is saying that we have a K value that's less than one. That is not going to be a large value of K. So that means a K value of less than one, that would mean that this is non-spontaneous. So we know right now that there are two statements that are contradictory. This statement is telling us that the reaction is spontaneous and this one's telling us it's non-spontaneous. And that means that this no false statements thing is not gonna be the correct answer to this problem. Something in this problem is wrong, we don't know which one it is, so that means we have to keep looking. The next easiest one, in my opinion, is the natural log of k. Um, this is saying that the natural log of k is less than zero. So for this one, I usually need to like, you know, plug in a couple of sample k values into the natural log equation and use the calculator just to solve a couple of them. So I'll solve the natural log of 100 and I'll solve the natural log of 0.1 just to kind of remind me because I'm not a mathematician. So um, just to remind me the relationship between natural log of big numbers and little numbers. The natural log of 100 is 4.6 and the natural log of 0 0.01 is negative 4.6. Okay, so if I have, this is telling me, if I have a natural log that's less than zero, so that means I'm looking at this, this type of situation right here, not this exact situation, but this type of situation. If the natural log is less than zero, that means that it came from a small k value. So natural log is less than zero. The natural log of k is less than zero means that you had a small k which means that it is non-spontaneous. Okay, so that means that this term right here says that the reaction is non-spontaneous. Now I have two consistent terms and one inconsistent term, and that's all the information that I need to answer this problem because only one of these four statements is going to be false. And since I've decided that these two are both non-spontaneous, just the way the Alex problem is set up, it would not let this be spontaneous as well because then you'd have two that said spontaneous and two that said non-spontaneous and you wouldn't be able to figure it out. But let's pretend like, you know, we hadn't figured this out yet, so we would actually have to analyze this term. This is my least favorite one to analyze out of all. So this is saying that the value of delta G is greater than the value of T delta S. And we will apply that to this equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If the value of delta H is greater than the value of T delta S, the value of delta G will be a positive number, which means that it will be non-spontaneous. 
So another non-spontaneous. Let's try this again. Uh, remember, I like to start with delta G. This is a delta G uh, less than zero, a negative delta G, which means the reaction is spontaneous. Second thing that I like to look at is the K value. If we have a big K value greater than one, then the reaction is spontaneous. So we have two consistent terms. Uh, now let's look at our natural log of K. Our natural log of K is, again, less than zero. Just like we saw over here, natural log of K is uh, less than zero, a negative number. So that means that our K value must have been small, non-spontaneous. So there's our inconsistent term. Again, we only need to find one that's inconsistent. Uh, but let's look at this one too. Um, this says that the delta H is less than T delta S. So that means, I'll move this out of the way. Delta H is less than T delta S. So that means when we plug into delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, we're going to get a big number over here, a small number over here, and that's going to give us a negative number for delta G, which is spontaneous. So that's consistent, again, with the, the first term being non-spontaneous.